Now that we've uh, ran all of our minus 12 mesh and showed you how simple and easy and exacting it is to get it, we're going to go ahead and uh, take our 30 mesh hopper and we're going to take the rest of the concentrate that's in the bucket this morning that went through a 30 mesh classifying screen. We're going to add it to this hopper and show you how easy it is for the Gold Lab to extract your minus 30. Now when I say minus 30, I'm talking about minus 30 mesh all the way down to whatever we've got. Well, I know that this gold that we're going to be running a test with today has got micron sized gold in it. So there's our minus 30 hopper installed right there. And the only thing that I'm going to be concentrating on watching as we run this now is going to be this water line right over here on the back side. You'll notice that once I set the wa water line and get it basically where I want it, I don't have to fool with a control knob anymore. This is not like an ordinary vortex bowl setup where you've got to spend all day long chasing the water. We went a long ways out of our way to find these valves that uh, eliminate that problem. Okay, Vern, uh, do we have some uh, minus 30 ready to go? And there it is. Oh, it looks like we've got maybe, uh, I don't know, 8 or 10 or 12 ounces. We'll just go ahead and take that product. Let's just use our water supply hose here. We'll turn on just a little bit of a pin stream out of our water supply hose. And we'll take our product here and turn it right up in there. Just like that. Let me get a little bit more water pressure going here. About like that. And we'll add this to our hopper. And wash that out real nice so we don't miss a thing in there. Because we know that there's going to be a lot of fine gold in here. And fine gold is what the gold lab is all about. And there we go. Got that all cleaned out real nice. We'll set that uh, little cleanup bucket aside. Turn off our accessory water. Put this right back in where it's at. And now we're going to show you how to handle 30 mesh minus. Remember about the surfactant we showed you earlier? Always remember, put a couple of drops of surfactant or soap or whatever material you're using into your hopper while the water is still in it and then it's very important to know that you want to pour all of your excess water off. We don't need that excess water on top of that minus 30 mesh material. So we'll get rid of all the water we possibly can right off of it just like that and for good reason which you're going to see in a moment. Put our hopper back, put our hopper pin back in just like we had it a moment ago and basically we're all set to go. Again we're watching our 30 mesh line over here we haven't had to adjust our water, our water's still where it's supposed to be and we're ready to go. We're going to go ahead and just pull this bottom cap off of this hopper right here and start our concentrate flowing out of our minus 30. I hope you can see that with a camera and you'll notice as your concentrate starting to come out that it is creating quite a little V right over the top of the jet and the heaviest of the gold is going straight down to the black sand while the lighter blonde sands are traveling across the top of the jet. If you do not get above the 30 mesh line when you're feeding it, you cannot lift a piece of 30 mesh gold out of the vortex bowl. Same thing with the 50 mesh line and the 100 mesh line. It took us a long time to find those, but once we did, this is what has made the Gold Lab so successful for extracting your fine gold from your concentrate without losing it. I wanted to explain to you about the tips. I spent a lot of time uh, devising a method of being able to create the holes in these tips to match this mesh size. And that hole matches a 50 mesh, but the hole that's in this one matches a 30 mesh. And I even have a hopper available for fine, fine sand, such as beach sand, where you can have a hole matched for 100 mesh. And to show you how finely tuned these tips are, I'm going to add just a little bit of water to this hopper that's quit running concentrate at the moment and watch what happens. You will have 100% full control of how much product goes into the vortex bowl. That way you don't have to worry about slugging it up and you don't have to worry about putting more product in it than the water speed and height will handle. And to give you an idea how well and fine-tuned those tips are. Watch what happens when I add just as little as a drop or two of water to this and watch the product start running again. Just like that. Just a drop or two at a time gives you full control of how fast you want your concentrate to go into your vortex bowl. Uh, once you get it started, I just let it go a little bit like that and got it down real low so you'd be able to see how that feeds. And now that it's started, I can go ahead and just add some water to it and we'll get right after getting this concentrate ran for you. Another thing that we can do, and it's real convenient, is use your water accessory hose 
and when your water starts to get down to the point where it's just about to quit running you could go ahead if you wanted to and turn on your water accessory hose until you get just the slightest drop coming out of that and you'll find that your product will continue to feed by itself pretty well regulated and automated We've got a nice steady drip going there and our concentrate starting to run for us. We've let our 30 mesh concentrate run out and finish that up. So we'll take that off and set that off aside. And now we're going to show you what it, uh, how easy it is to clean up your clean gold and extract your clean gold out of the vortex bowl. And then we're going to show you a last minute uh, cleanup how to get that last tiniest bit of sand off. And that part, most people don't believe it unless they see it with their own two eyes. So. Let's start by just herding this little bit of gold that's in the uh, vortex bowl right now into a pile and just snuff up that clean gold. I'm going to go ahead and just shut the water off here for a moment. Take my small cleanup bottle and I'm going to go ahead and blow most of the bulk of this gold, this clean gold, right to the outside. And don't worry about it if you don't get it all. Uh, as you can see, there's still a lot of it mixed in with the black sands that's around the bottom of that cone. But right now, we want to get what the gold lab is known the most for, and that's for extracting clean, clean gold. Then we're going to show you how to clean the rest of that gold from the rest of that uh, black sand. Okay, a few pieces over here. We're going to blow it all back up in a nice little pile here. I call this gold herding. And uh, then we're going to pick it up, snuff it up with our snuffer bottle here and get it out of there. I'll show you how we'll get even more. Okay, looks like we may have about six or eight grains of gold there in that concentrate. This is pretty good stuff, uh, Vern. Okay, we'll give the bottle a nice hard squeeze just like that, and then we'll vacuum. And we'll get this gold out of here. If we don't get every single piece of it, we're not going to be a bit worried for what we're about to show you in a moment here. Okay, and then we'll get the rest of the bulk of that. All right, now we've got an awful lot of clean gold that we've already got scooped up out of there. We're going to go ahead and start the water back up and set it once again for the 30 mesh or finer line. This time we'll put it between 30 and 50 mesh. And we'll take our larger snuffer bottle and we'll turn it upside down and invert it just like this with it full of water and give it a good hard squeeze and a puff just like that. Blow all of our concentrate and what gold is left back to the outer perimeter of the bowl. Okay. One more shot like that to make sure it's all on the outside. And then we'll let our water come up to about the 100 to the 50 mesh line, any place in there, and watch all this sand walk off of that clean gold and leave it out there. Then as soon as that gets fairly well cleared of itself, we'll snuff up that clean gold. And that's only going to leave a few micro fine particles in amongst that thin black ring of sand that's going to be at the bottom of that apex in the center. As you can see, this is cleaning up real quick over here. There's another little way to help that out, speed matters up, and that's with the Gold Lab Neodymium Magnet. And the Rare Earth Magnet we explained to you a little bit earlier is just great for picking up magnetics. And we're going to use this to assist ourselves a little bit by giving that a little plunge like that, hold on to it, and the same speed of the water, we're going to travel around the bowl with that magnet. And you can see how fast we can lift the magnetics off of that but we won't take a chance with them. We'll drop them right down the center hole too. There could often be a piece of dirty gold and that it would be a little bit of gold with a piece of iron hooked to it. And if there's still some in there, we'll find that gold in the bottom of our sluice box when we clean that out a little bit. Now just a little bit around the center and we'll see if there's any magnetics left in that. Sure enough, a bunch of magnetics there. One more time with that. This takes the bulk of the magnetics off and speeds matters up a little bit when it comes time to cleaning up your fine gold. Now, if you're like me and you get a little bit impatient, you get a little bit of black sand still on the bottom, you can disturb it just like that by giving it a puff. You notice that I moved the bottle about the same speed as the water when I did that. That way you don't interrupt the water flow. We're still right there at 100 mesh water flow and that's where I want to be. One more disturbance about like that and the black sand's all starting to clear itself real nicely now and our fine go clean gold is remaining on the outside perimeter of the vortex bowl okay just about another half a minute or so we'll let that run as you can see our cleanest gold is right here and the last remaining little bits of black sand is coming off around the other third of the vortex bowl right there 
Well, that's pretty well got it just about cleaned up there. We'll check it one more time, blowing that out. And a few, few pieces of that fine gold get back into that ring of sand. We're not going to worry about it one little bit because we're going to show you how to get that out of there. Okay, now we have all clean gold around the exterior portion of the bowl and our last little bit of remaining black sand concentrate around the bottom of the apex in the center. We're going to shut the water off one more time and scoop all of our clean gold up. So let's do that. We'll just cut the main switch over here, take our small snuffer bottle just as we did a few moments ago and start right in here and just herd that gold around there. We'll try to get the bulk of it and get as close to that black sand in the center as we can without disturbing that black sand because we want that to remain there. And that's going to be for our last little bit of cleanup and what we call the five second count. It's one of the most exciting portions of watching a gold lab work for what we've discovered about the uh, parameters of a, of a vortex and how it works. Come back over here at this other side and blow these pieces back around that way and we'll end up hurting all of our gold back up in one pile. I could have put my hand inside the bowl here a moment ago and stopped the water circulation just a little bit to help. Okay, and here we come back around with the rest of our gold going this way now. And it looks like we may have another three or four grains of gold in the bowl. We've uh, snuffed up all the balance of our clean gold on the outside, but you'll notice that we have still have a ring of black sand in the center, and you can see there's some very small microscopic size gold micron sized gold around that uh, bottom of that cone. Uh, this is the part that I get the biggest kick out of because nobody seems to believe this unless they see it with their own two eyes. And what I've discovered by studying vortex technology is exactly how the water in a vortex reacts to speed. And I've clocked the water on the outside of the vortex bowl and I've clocked the water speed as it goes down the cone in the center. And the two differences between those speeds as it speeds up, of course, is what causes the lift. But I found out that the declinations of the side of the bowl compared to the declination of the cone in the center, I got a real surprise as to where this lift began and where it stopped. And I'm going to show you exactly how it works now. We call this the five second final cleanup. I'm going to go ahead and turn my water on full speed. And all I'm going to be watching is my mesh lines inside the bowl over here of 100, 50, and 30 mesh. And I'm going to place my thumb over the vibrator switch, which is the other vibrator on the bottom of the bowl. We've just reached line two, and you'll notice nothing is moving in the center of the bowl. There's no lift going on. We've hit line three, and you can see the lift just starting to start now as the product being picked up. And now I've reached line four at the top. I'm turning on my vibrator, and I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five seconds, and at the time I count five seconds, the water has reached the top of the bowl. I'm just going to go ahead and just shut the system off. And now I'm going to turn the power completely off. Now if you want to talk about some fine gold, there's your micron size gold that I was able to maintain in the bowl and still be able to lift all the black sand off of it. There's still a few specks of black sand right there and I could have let that go for maybe one more second count. But that's how well the gold lab works when you know what the vortex is supposed to do. And as you watch the vortex cone in the center, can you see the fine gold falling back down the cone? That's the gold that was unable to lift and that I've discovered is not able to lift in that five second count. That's one of the most amazing parts about the Gold Lab, to be able to retain that last small amount of micro fine gold and still be able to lift all the black sand and the trash off of it. So we're going to go ahead and just snuff that out of there now and get rid of that. Last little bit of super fines, and that'll leave our vortex bowl just completely clean.